So once, once again, I'll welcome you to this session. And this is, uh, we're going to continue with the, the types of oscillators. From the previous lesson, we're dealing with the other types of oscillators, which are still, non, which are still sinusoidal. This one is, is a transistor blocking oscillator. So what we have here is a VCC. So when the, when the switch is closed, when this part of the switch is closed, the current rises rapidly. And uh, when current flows through the ground, it sets an, an EMF, which is induced in L2 from L1. So that EMF induced in L2 will be able to go through C and actually increase the base current. When the base current is increased, the output of the transistor is driven to saturation. When the transistor is driven to saturation, then uh, any further increase in the, the induced EMF at L2 is no more. At that point, then the, the, the capacitor starts to discharge and it goes to a cutoff. So it remains to a cutoff and whatever sets up the, the re-establish the, the conducting path or the saturation path is because of the leakage current that flows there when the, when the capacitor is cut off. Remember the capacitor is cut off, it, 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 it gives out a leakage current that's able to create some base current here. So when that leakage current becomes excessively enough, then this will be turned on and the, re, the, the conduction is reestablished. So one thing was, this is our operation we're going to just put down. operational when the switch is closed. The current is rapidly set up to the ground. The current links L1 and L2 inductors and the induced EMF at L2 at L2 increases the bias current. Increases, increases the, increases the bias current to the base of the transistor. As a result of this, the transistor is driven into saturation. So during uh, this process, the capacitor C charges the capacitor C charges at a maximum voltage at which no further induced EMF results in increased current. The capacitor then starts to discharge.
through the resistor R and drives the transistor to cut off and drive the transistor to cut off. During cut off, during cut off, the capacitor produces leakage current. Leakage current that the leakage current which when is adequate enough enough is adequate enough during which it during which that we have during which it turns the transistor back into saturation or conduction. So from this, all this, we have seen that this is the basic principle on, on how the transistor operates. So when this one is reestablished, then we reestablish the, the process again, and we start now generating the, the oscillations. So from here, we're going to talk about uh, some of the advantages. Advantages, I believe, advantages of RC oscillators. Number one, I believe it's expensive. Number two, less heavy, less bulky. So some of the limitations or disadvantages Number one, the, the circuit warms or produces heat. During operation, and this results results into nonlinearity into linearity linearity and so alters the frequency Another disadvantage is that any change in the component value may be due to aging or effects of temperature affects the feedback current and so results in and so results in change in frequency.
So these are the main problems of limitation of RC. So up to this point, I believe we are finished with the whatever I've had as non sinusoidal oscillators. We are finished with, with the, the sinusoidal oscillators. So we're going to go to the non sinusoidal oscillators. <laughs>